Hello friends, in the previous lecture we discussed the method of spherical harmonics the PN approximation method. We derived equations and boundary conditions for the method the first order method that is P1 method. We discussed the boundary conditions for one dimensional medium. We also argued that the method is general and it can be applied to any problem that is any complex geometry we can apply the method. So, we will take it uh, uh, to general coordinate system in this lecture. The equations that we derived in the method the spherical harmonics method were there were two equations. The first equation is d q by d tau is equal to 1 minus omega 4 pi i b minus g this is the first equation and second equation is 1 by 3 d g by d tau plus q. So, these equation we derived in the framework of one dimensional plane par parallel slab, but they are general because the only assumptions while deriving these equations was that the intensity does not vary with azimuthal angle and we took first two terms of the spherical harmonics in deriving, deriving those equations. So, there is no restriction on the dimensionality of the problem as such on this uh, method. So, we can write down d q by d tau which is the divergence as del dot q where divergence is calculated in the non dimensional optical coordinate tau and the right hand side is 1 minus omega 4 pi i b minus g. So, this is the equation in vector form for the del dot q. Similarly, the second term we write 1 by 3 del g now we have g is a scalar. So, we have to take gradient of this scalar g and again the coordinates are non dimensional optical coordinates plus q is equal to 0. So, q is a vector. So, when we take del dot q we are getting a scalar and g is a scalar when we take gradient it becomes a vector. So, the first equation is basically a scalar equation and the second equation is basically the vector equation. Now, what we do is uh, so these, these are two coupled differential equation two coupled partial differential equation if we are solving this problem in complex geometry. So, what we will do is we will eliminate q from these equations. So, what we take we take divergence of the second equation and we get 1 by 3 del square g plus del dot q after taking the divergence of the second equation and then substitute for del dot q from the first equation in this. So, we get 1 by 3 del square g minus 1 minus omega g is equal to 1 minus omega minus 1 minus omega 4 pi i b. So, this equation uh, looks familiar uh, very similar to the Laplace equation this equation is called Helmholtz uh, equation it is an elliptic equation uh, we can solve this equation numerically very easily. The generalized boundary condition uh, for a gray surface in three dimension can be written as minus 2 minus epsilon upon epsilon where epsilon is the emittance of the surface 2 by 3 n dot gradient g where n dot is the vector at the local surface plus g is equal to 4 pi i b w. Okay. Now, this type of boundary condition is called boundary condition of mixed type or third kind. So, this is boundary condition of third kind where we have gradient and the variable appearing in the equation. So, we have gradient of g as well as the variable appearing in this equation that is why it is boundary condition of third kind, but this can be easily solved uh, using finite volume method. Uh, I will give you an outline how this method can be applied to any problem in complex geometry. We will solve uh, let us solve one problem. So, we have uh, a cylindrical medium two concentric cylinders of radius r 1 and r 2 maintained at isothermal temperatures T 1 and T 2. The medium inside the cylinder is gray and non scattering. So, we have to find out the heat flux between the two cylinders. So, we have cylinder 1, second cylinder this is the center, this cylinder is 
radius R1 and temperature is T1 and this is R2 temperature is T2. So, we have to find out how much heat flux is basically happening between these two cylinders. So, let us solve this problem. The governing equation we will uh, we have already derived ok. So, in a vector form we will take this uh, equation the first equation as we derived del dot q del dot q is equal to 1 minus omega now omega is 0. So, non scattering medium. So, 4 pi i b minus g 4 pi i b minus g or simply 4 sigma t power 4 minus g. So, we have gray absorption coefficient kappa. So, we can just simply integrate and find out with the total values of q and g. So, the first equation reduces to del dot q is equal to 4 sigma t power 4 minus g and this is in optical coordinate. The second equation is 1 by 3 gradient of g plus q is equal to 0, 1 by 3 gradient of g plus q is equal to 0. So, these are the uh, two equation. Now, let us uh, uh, find out the solution of these equation. So, we have del dot q is equal to 4 sigma t power 4 minus g. Now, we are assuming uh, radiative equilibrium. So, under radiative equilibrium del dot q will be simply equal to 0 and g will be simply equal to 4 sigma t power 4. So, if we know g we can calculate the temperature inside the medium. So, g will be simply equal to 4 sigma t power 4. If we know g then we can solve for the unknown temperature inside the medium ok. Now, from this what we get del dot q is equal to 0. So, we get in cylindrical coordinates In cylindrical coordinates, we can write down divergence operator as 1 by tau d by d tau tau times q and this will be equal to 0. So, when we integrate this, we get tau q is simply equal to c 1 or q is equal to c 1 by tau. So, that is the heat flux varies inversely with respect to tau ok. Now, uh, same thing uh, we what we do we substitute for q and into this equation so, this is equation 1 this is equation 2. So, putting the expression of q in equation uh, uh, 2 we get dg by d tau is equal to minus 3 q is equal to minus 3 c 1 by tau ok. So, we get g is equal to minus 3 times c 1 ln tau plus C 2. So, this is the expression for G ok. Now, the boundary conditions So, boundary condition we will take general uh, boundary conditions as given by this equation epsilon is 1 because we have black cylinders. So, epsilon is equal to 1. So, our boundary condition will be at tau is equal to tau 1 the boundary condition is simply equal to 2 q is equal to 4 sigma t 1 4 minus g and at tau is equal to tau 2 we have the boundary condition minus 2 q is equal to 4 sigma t 2 power 4 minus g ok. So, we have got two boundary conditions and two unknowns here c 1 and c 2. So, what we can do we can solve for this uh, uh, unknown c, uh, c 1 and c 2. So, c 1 comes out to be equal to 4 sigma t 1 power 4 minus t 2 power 4 subtracting the two boundary conditions will eliminate uh, the g and you can solve for this. So, you get c 1 is equal to 4 sigma t 1 power 4 minus t 2 power 4 upon 2 by tau 1 plus 2 by tau 2 
plus 3 ln tau 2 by tau 1 this is the value of C 1 and C 2 is equal to 4 sigma T 2 power 4 plus C 1 2 by tau 2 plus 3 ln tau 2. So, this is the second uh, constant. So, C 1 and C 2. Uh, so, it seems they are mathematically complicated, but we can still uh, uh, we could solve this equation. So, we can define uh, non dimensional heat flux as Q upon sigma T 1 power 4 minus T 2 power 4. So, we have already calculated the expression for flux. So, Q flux is simply C 1 by tau. So, this will be simply equal to C 1 by tau. So, we get 2 upon 1 plus tau 2 by tau 1 by tau 2. So, tau 2 by uh, tau 1, we can just take tau 2 out plus 3 by 2 ln and this is tau 2 by tau 1 and this will be tau 2 common. So, tau. Okay. So, this is the heat flux non dimensional heat flux and similarly non dimensional temperature distribution or the uh, heat source term T 4 minus T 2 4 upon T 1 4 minus T 2 4 that is non dimensional MSC power of the medium or temperature power 4 is equal to 1 plus 3 by 2 tau 2 ln tau 2 by tau and this will be equal to 1 plus tau 2 by tau 1 plus 3 by 2 tau 2 ln tau 2 by tau 1. Okay. So, uh, so, this is how we have calculated the radiative heat flux non dimensional radiative heat flux and non dimensional uh, temperature power 4 or the MSC power for this concentric cylinders. Now, we will see that uh, for optically thick case the heat flux goes to uh, correct value, but for optically thin case the result is not accurate. So, for optically thin case optically thin case means we have uh, tau small kappa is small tau is small. So, our heat flux goes to for optically thin cases as 2 upon 1 plus r 1 by r 2. So, 2 upon 1 plus r 1 by r 2 while for optically thin case the correct value is psi is equal to 1 this is the exact value. Okay. So, we see that if r 1 is uh, if r 2 is uh, much much larger than uh, r 1 then this value will go to 2 psi will go to 2. So, this is not exact in fact the error is 100 percent while if the cylinders are almost the same dimension r 1 is equal to r 2 then it will go to correct, uh, correct optically thin limit. So, if the gap between the these two cylinder is small it goes to optically thin limit correctly, but if the gap is large then the error will be 100 percent for this P 1 method. So, P 1 method uh, although very popular, but it has its own limitation in optically thin medium and this is the result uh, plotted uh, uh, for this case. What you see here is uh, the non dimensional heat flux at the inner cylinder versus optically optical thickness and you see that under optically thick condition the P 1 method P 3 method goes to correct limit correct values while for optically thin case the error is large the P 3 method is more accurate than the P 1 method as is expected it retains more terms, but still the error is large uh, for optically thin cases. So, there is inherent limitation in the spherical harmonics method to calculate heat flux in optically thin cases. Now, how to implement this method in CFD codes? Uh, uh, so, as engineers we are know how to program or discretize the partial differential equations. This is elliptic type of partial differential equation we call it Helmholtz equation. 
we can discretize this on any domain i have taken this here a cartesian system uh, on uh, in a two dimensional uh, domain cartesian mesh you can discretize it using central differencing scheme so the first term del square g in two dimensional can be discretized as in terms of the values i j i plus 1 j i minus 1 j i j minus 1 i j plus 1 so this is basically a stencil in terms of this stencil values we can discretize the helmholtz equation which is elliptic and we can solve it using uh, techniques already developed for cfd for this type of equations so normally in uh, combustion applications the uh, uh, many researchers have used and are uh, using the spherical harmonics method uh, uh, along with the equations of momentum and energy but one should always keep in mind while calculating the heat flux radiative heat flux in such applications that the method has problems in optically thin cases and the heat flux calculated using this method in optically thin cases may not be accurate while for optically thick case the method is in good agreement with the exact results in the next lecture we will discuss uh, another approximate method that is the discrete ordinate method to solve the radiative transfer equation so together with the method of spherical harmonics the discrete ordinate method is uh, one of the most popular methods available in uh, commercial cfd codes so we will study this method in the next lecture thank you